Hello, everybody, and welcome to today's webinar, Lymph Node Mapping in Colorectal Cancer Surgery. Before we get started, I would like to go over a few items so you know how to participate in today's event. You may have joined the presentation listening using your computer speaker system by default. If you would prefer to join over the telephone, just select phone call in the audio pane and the dial-in information will be displayed for you. You will have the opportunity to submit text questions to today's presenter by typing your questions into the questions pane of your attendee control panel. We welcome your questions and you can send them in at any time during the presentation and we'll collect them and address as many as we have time for during the Q&A session at the end of the presentation. All questions will be captured and if we don't manage to get to them, we will follow up with you after the webinar. It's my great pleasure to introduce your speaker today, Dr. Gabriel Liberale. Dr. Liberale graduated as a medical doctor in 1997 at the Université Libre de Brussels in Belgium and later obtained his PhD at the same university with a doctoral thesis entitled Role of ICG Fluorescent Imaging and in the Staging and Treatment of Colorectal Cancer. Currently, he is a senior surgeon in the Department of Surgical Oncology at the Comprehensive Cancer Centre Institute J. Bordet. Professor Liberali is responsible for the management of peritoneal surface malignancies of colorectal and ovarian cancer. He has an interest in fluorescence imaging in the field of surgical oncology, including sentinel node detection, sentinel lymph node detection. He is co-author of over 50 publications and a board member of the Royal Belgian Society for Surgery, the Belgian Soci Surgical Society of Oncology and the Belgian Group of Endoscopic Surgery. He is also a member of several scientific societies. So it's with great pleasure that I hand over to Dr. Liberali. Liberali, your, the floor is all yours. So, hi everybody. Thank you for this kind uh, introduction. Um, so I will speak uh, on the uh, fluorescence imaging technique to uh, detect sentinel leaf node in a, a colorectal cancer. So uh, first of all, I have no conflict of interest to disclose. I will give you some word of introduction concerning the sentinel lymph node concept and then about the two techniques, the standard one, the blue dye technique, and then the uh, fluorescence imaging using ICG. Thereafter, I will present you our experience using ex vivo ICG fluorescence imaging and uh, I will present you uh, a literature review we uh, published uh, recently. And I will uh, conclude the presentation with some perspective. Uh, I will present you uh, a new concept of sentinel lymph node detection uh, in colorectal cancer. And I will show you some video uh, to try to, to, to show you who it can work. So, uh, as you know, uh, the uh, prognosis of patients with primary colorectal cancer depend on the staging. And uh, we also know that about 20 to 30 percent of patients with early stage, stage one or stage two, will uh, present a recurrence of their disease. It's uh, probably in part related to uh, an understaging at the moment of diagnosis. And it has been shown that the prognosis is uh, directly related to the lymph node number uh, analyzed on the operative specimen. So, who higher the number of lymph nodes uh, examined, who better the staging and who better the prognosis, as we will have a shift from uh, a stage one and two to stage three. And we know that patients with stage three will systematically received uh, adjuvant chemotherapy. So in colon cancer, it's very important to have an accurate staging because it will directly influence the fact to administrate or not an adjuvant treatment. Uh, and therefore, there is really a potential role of sentinel lymph node detection in end staging. 
So as you know, the sentinel lymph node is defined as the first relay of tumoral lymphatic drainage, and it reflects the nodal statue of the patient. So just analyzing several lymph nodes, one or two, three, uh, we have the global statue of the patient. And that's very, very important. If we look with the example of breast cancer and melanoma, we know that if this patient have, for example, negative sentinel lymph node, we, it, it will allow to avoid to perform complete lymphadenectomy in this patient. So it modifies the surgery. And moreover, it also allows to perform more advanced technique at pathology using serial section, immunohistochemistry, or other uh, uh, molecular technique to try to, to find uh, uh, some small metastasis and uh, uh, giving the opportunity to upstage a part of this patient. In colorectal cancer, it's a little bit different because uh, we know that when we resect the primary, we also resect, we, we perform also a systematic lymphadenectomy. But it has been shown in the uh, literature that some patient, about six to eight percent of the patient, can have an aberrant drainage. So using an I vivo sentinel lymph node technique can allow to guide the surgery and to modify the uh, uh, resection. But most of the time, we, we use the technique to upstage patient as I already said, uh, as in breast cancer and melanoma, to perform more advanced technique at pathology uh, using uh, serial section, immunochemistry, or other, uh, and to uh, upstage this patient. It's also very important when we use this different technique at pathology to, uh, to know the different definition of metastasis. In general, uh, the macrometastases are defined as metastases of more than two millimeter. Authentic micrometastases are metastases from 0.2 millimeter to two millimeter uh, sizing. And finally, Occult micrometastases are only metastases detected by immunohistochemistry and molecular techniques. And why it's important? Because actually, we don't know really the prognostic role of the detection of occult micrometastases. So it's only important to uh, detect macrometastases and authentic micrometastases, meaning small metastases detected by, for example, the use of serial section, uh, section but uh, using standard uh, staining of the lymph node with hematoxylin eosine. So uh, there are a lot of reports in the, uh, the 90s and beginning of 2000 uh, by a lot of team. And uh, the technique used at that time was the blue dye uh, uh, technique. As you can see here, uh, you can use it by always by peritumeral injection or submucosically or subserosally. Um, and you see here the results of one of the studies we published uh, uh, more than 10 years ago at that time, including more than 100 patients, and 84 patients in this study were N0. And when we look to the analysis of the sentinel leaf node, we show that we were able, just using, using serial section and hematoxylin eosine staining, I insist on that, um, we were able to upstage 10% of patients. But if we look forward in the, more in detail, we also saw that two of these patients at macrometastasis, so metastasis of more than uh, two millimeter, and then maybe this, this metastasis uh, could be uh, found also by a standard technique. And so in reality, we probably upstage 8% uh, of uh, this patient in this series. The feasibility is quite similar to uh, uh, results reported in uh, the literature, about 95%. That's quite good. And the sensitivity is uh, low, 60%. It means that's in comparison with breast cancer and melanoma, that's very, very low. It means that we have 40% of false negative results. So in 40% of patients, patients have positive lymph nodes and a negative sentinel lymph node. That's really the problem of sentinel lymph node in colorectal. 
probably therefore the technique is still debated in colorectal cancer and therefore also there is a big variability in the literature concerning the sensitivity of this technique varying from 33% to 100%. But still, if we look to the results of meta-analysis, they recommend to do it because still the technique allows to upstage a percentage of uh, a significant percentage of patients. More recently, uh, as you know, uh, the ICG for a sense imaging technique has been reported in several cancer and each reported in colorectal uh, cancer. Just a word about what it is uh, uh, fluorescence imaging. In, it belongs to uh, uh, the optical imaging, and optical imaging is defined as an imaging technique using just the light property to image the tissue. So when we speak about ICG fluorescence imaging, it means that we will use the spectrum of the near light, uh, meaning a uh, uh, light with a wavelength of 700 to 900 uh, nanometer. So why to use ICG? Because it's a safe molecule. It's uh, known actually for more than 50 years, if FDA approved. It's also inexpensive. That's very important. In Belgium, it costs about uh, 70 euros for 25 milligram. And as you can see, ICG is uh, uh, activated in the uh, near spectrum, as I told you before. And what is the advantage to image in this spectrum is that we call uh, the biological window, is that we can avoid autofluorescence from other molecules present in our body as for example the porphyrin in the hemoglobin. So we have a very background uh, fluorescent signal and it allows us to have a very good contrast view. So a, a, a better signals to nose ratio um, uh, uh, that therefore it's very interesting. Uh, another um, characteristic is the fact that ICG is uh, eliminated essentially by the hepatobiliar uh, system and has also a very short half time. Another very important advantage is that there are already a lot of, mach of machines on the market for open surgery, for laparoscopic surgery, for robotic surgery. And uh, so it's very easy to, to, to use it uh, in a clinical practice. And we, when we see, when we speak about clinical practice, we see here all the clinical application of ICG for sense imaging. You see that, that there are a lot of uh, um, application dependent also of the type of injection, intradermal, intravenous, peritumoral. But here we will speak uh, only about the sentinel lymph node uh, technique by peritumoral injection, and therefore I will uh, present you a, a new approach. So, concerning now the results of our, uh, uh, with our uh, experience using ex vivo uh, fluorescence imaging, uh, we published uh, several years ago uh, a small study, a feasibility study, including patients uh, with colon cancer and uh, using both techniques the standard one with the blue dye, patent blue dye, and the new one with ICG for sense imaging. And the objective of the study was first to see if fluorescence technique was feasible, and secondarily to see if it was able to improve the sensitivity of N plus uh, detection. Just for information, uh, in practice, you see here or uh, it works. Uh, you have an example. The specimen is on back table. So it is much better to begin with this type of technique because it's not so easy to inject and to learn to correctly inject, avoiding uh, leakage uh, uh, around the tumor. So uh, we inject around the tumor for quadrant and we inject first the patent blue four times 0.5 cc. Then, as usual, we look for the uh, blue lymphatic channel, and thereafter, we look for the blue sentinel lymph node. And then, a little bit later, we do the same with ICG, but using uh, a concentration of 0.5 milligram per cc, 
with the, at the same manner as uh, uh, the previous technique we inject at the four quadrant around the tumor then we uh, look with the uh, camera for the uh, fluorescent sentinel lymph node and the nodes are marked with a blue stitch or with a green stitch in function of the technique used but most of the time we found the same uh, 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 lymph node. So, uh, as I told you, we use the standard hematoxylin eosine staining for the analysis, but using also serial section. And for academic reason, we also look at the uh, uh, effect of uh, uh, the use of uh, immunohistochemistry. So, we use the PDE camera. Here we have just to show you that the number of uh, blue sentinel leaf node and fluorescent sentinel leaf node were uh, the same. And here I will show you uh, an example of uh, uh, the technique. So uh, I repeat, uh, uh, a next vivo ICG uh, fluorescent uh, imaging sentinel leaf node technique using a peritumoral injection. This is the case of a young man with a small left colon cancer, no distant metastasis, no local regional suspect lymph node. We see here the different hotspot around the tumor. So this is the spot coming from peritumor injection. Then we have to wait several minutes. As it is ex vivo, we can palpate the tumor. There is no problem to do that, to activate the mobilization of, of ICG in the lymphatics. And then we see here the uh, uh, big hotspot corresponding to the uh, fluorescent sentinel uh, lymph node. And this lymph node will be marked with uh, a blue stitch and will be analyzed at pathology uh, more in detail using serial section. So um, if we look now a little bit more in details concerning the, uh, the characteristic of the lymph node, we see that seven patients had positive lymph node at pathology. And the feasibility of the technique was good, 95%. But we see that three out seven patients with positive lymph node uh, were uh, uh, true positive. But it means that there were four false negative uh, in the blue technique. And in the uh, uh, fluorescent technique, we observe three false negative results, meaning a sensitivity from respectively 43 and 57%. So no big difference between the two techniques. Uh, and in our survey, we did not observe an upstaging of patients using, ser using serial section, but as you see, it's a very small series. So we look a little bit forward to, to see why we, we have a so high uh, rate of false negative. And as you can see, we, 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 we can observe that most of the patients with positive lymph node have large tumor, PT3 or PT4 tumor. And that's well reported in the literature. The, the technique works well in patients with small tumor, but in patients with large tumor, uh, it did not work very good because we have a very high risk uh, to have false negative. Um, the problem is that most of the patients uh, having positive lymph node are patients with large tumor. And those patients are the patients uh, in which we need to have uh, uh, an approach. So the conclusion of this feasibility study was that uh, it's feasible, that both techniques are complementary, but um, there were no real increase in sensitivity and uh, particularly a very high rate of false negative related to the fact that most of the patients had large tumor. So we really need new approach. So it's just to show you an example of who it works uh, practically. Here we have a publication of Bonnie using uh, the technique of bilaparoscopy, using a, a, a small needle. Uh, in the right column, is very easy to do it without having too, too much leakage. But in the left column, it's not so easy to, 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 to do it because if you have a leakage, everything becomes fluorescent and you don't see any, anything uh, anymore. So I don't like so much this uh, type of approach using uh, subserosal uh, injection. 
in general uh, when uh, we used we we used also another uh, um, a type of uh, uh, injection we we inject subserosally but using a laparoscopic needle it's, i i think it's it's uh, much easier uh, because you can really aspirate very easily when we take out the needle from uh, the subserosa and avoiding uh, a, a leakage and the other uh, approach uh, you probably heard about it it's using a submucosal uh, injection uh, this is a publication of curie and that's very a very good uh, uh, approach i like it but um, um wait uh, two seconds just okay perfect so uh, just here um uh, you you need to have a, a gastroenterologist to to do the colonoscopy during the uh, the procedure, and so it takes a little time. And if you do, as in this case, a right colectomy, uh, you you have also the risk to have uh, an insufflation uh, of the colon. So the procedure can be a little bit uh, more difficult. So in general, I love this approach, but we use it mainly for left colon because then it's very easy to uh, it, it, it goes very fast to do the injection as you can see here uh, they inject three times uh, one cc of icg around the tumor in general we inject four four uh, four uh, times around the tumor and here you, you recognize the image the olympus system uh, and uh, you see that here uh, this is the colon uh, with the uh, injection and here this is the hotspot corresponding to the sentinel lymph node uh, near the uh, uh, colon. So uh, uh, then you have just to mark the lymph node with uh, a green uh, stitch. So uh, then concerning the literature review, uh, we perform a literature, uh, extensive literature uh, review uh, uh, recently also. As you can see, there are not a lot of publication. All publications include a small number of patients. And uh, I, I want just to show you something very important. Uh, if we, you look through these different studies, you can see that there is a lot of heterogeneity concerning the doses used, concerning the type of injection, subsorosal or submucosal, concerning the volume injected, and also concerning the results in terms of uh, sensitivity. Uh, as you can see, the sensitivity varies from 0% in one study to 100% in uh, other. So uh, this is quite the same as we observe with the blue dye technique in the 90s and beginning of 2000. It's exactly the same things. Um, and another important point is that we can see that in all the study in general, they did not use a more advanced technique to, to, to look, uh, for example, for uh, uh, authentic micrometastasis to try to upstage patient because that's the main objective using this uh, technique. So uh, the conclusion of uh, this uh, uh, literature review that clearly all studies show that the technique is feasible, but again we observe good results in series where they only include patients with small tumor, but uh, have very high risk in other series uh, and particularly in in those uh, including also patients with large tumor. So uh, clearly there is need for uh, uh, another uh, approach. So now uh, to conclude the presentation, I will speak about maybe some uh, perspective. Um, just two things. The first one, uh, we report uh, uh, several years, years ago, uh, two observation uh, in patient, uh, including in protocol using ICG injected intravenously uh, for the detection of tumoral tissue uh, in patients having colon cancer. And so what we observe is that, in fact, um, malignant lymph nodes were much more uh, fluorescent than benign one. And so uh, it means that clearly if we have 
uh, an involved uh, lymph node, we will uh, have a hyperfluorescent uh, uh, lymph node. That's the first observation. The second one was about the primary. And what we observe also after intravenous injection is that the primary colon is uh, uh, remain also much more fluorescent than the surrounding uh, tissue if you image about 1 or 30 after intravenous injection. So with these, these two observations, we decide to uh, develop a new uh, approach, what we called uh, the systemic sentinel lymph node meaning that I will not enter into details of this protocol, but uh, gruffly we, 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 we will compare in this protocol the classical, the standard technique using a blue dye injected around the tumor, and in the same time also uh, 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 fluorescence imaging using ICG uh, after intravenous injection at the beginning of, uh, of the operation. And what we expect is that in patients with large tumor, we will have a, 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 a false negative blue lymph node, but a positive, a true positive fluorescent lymph node, meaning then uh, that we will increase the sensitivity of the technique. And secondarily, on the other side, with patients having small tumor, then we know that the blue dye is not a bad technique, but only in patients with small tumor. So in this patient, we expect to have to find the same uh, sentinel lymph node being blue and fluorescent uh, 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 lymph node, but detected by two different types of injection. The first one by peritumoral, the other one by intravenous uh, injection. And so here I will show you in uh, practice how uh, it works. So it's real a lymph node mapping uh, after intravenous ingestion of ICG. And uh, as you know, because I'm sure that you already use uh, uh, intravenous injection of ICG, you see in general most uh, several lymph nodes. Here it's a case of patient with a large tumor. So patients are risk to have a false negative results using a peritumoral uh, blue dye uh, technique. You see here uh, a fusion image, combined image. You see the, the tumor, the primary tumor uh, being very uh, fluorescent. Uh, and then uh, we, we, as I already told you, this patient is at very, if you use the peritumoral injection, you have a very high risk to have a false negative results because we know that lymphatic are compressed by the tumor and so uh, uh, I, uh, the, the, the blue dye don't reach the sentinel lymph node. Again, but a black and white view, you see this is the uh, meso, uh, the right mesocolon, and here we can observe, I don't know if you uh, see it well, but we see a chapelet in French, I don't know in English, uh, several lymph node hyperfluorescence spots along here near the cecum and here along the uh, uh, small bowel. Okay, all those lymph nodes are not sentinel lymph nodes, but what is interesting for us is just the sentinel lymph node hyperfluorescent near the tumor. And that's it. Here, you see it. You see here a hot spot near the tumor, and that's what we call the uh, systemic sentinel lymph node. So now, in the same patient, we will compare with the blue dye technique, with the injection of, with using peritumoral injection, as I told you before, 0.5 cc injected around the tumor, uh, a 30 gauge uh, needle, as you can see, uh, we have some leakage here. And then we wait a little bit, and then we will look if the fluorescence leaf nodes are blue. And as we expected, here, on the anterior part of the meso, uh, the right mesocolon, we see that the lymph node is not blue at all. Then we also marked the relay thereafter. You see, in the same way, and as you can see, also the second relay is 
the, 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 the hyperfluorescence leaf node is not uh, blue. On the other side, this is the posterior part of the mesocolon. Then here we observe two sentinel blue lymph nodes. You can see it very well. This is with the blue. Huh? You see here one, you see here a channel, and you see here another one. And in fluorescent view, we see that these two sentinel, blue sentinel leaf nodes are uh, hyperfluorescent. And what we see also is that if we look near the tumor, we can see two hotspots. And we will look a little bit more after the section of, the, peri of, of, the, uh, of the, the, the fat. And you see, in fact, yes, there is another sentinel, blue sentinel lymph node. So I think the mapping uh, after intravenous injection can really help us to, to find the, the real uh, uh, lymph node near the tumor and uh, allowing to increase the risk to have um, a false negative. So this is another example, uh, but afterwards, uh, uh, after uh, fixation of the operative specimen, a patient with a small tumor, we see, you see here that also we use both technique, peritumoral, submucosal peritumoral injection, and we found the same lymph node being blue and fluorescent. And when we look here um, on the right side below, we see that the blue and fluorescent sentinel leaf node are uh, uh, really uh, hyperfluorescent in comparison with other sentinel leaf node present that were also uh, um, uh, hyperflu slightly fluorescent on the operative specimen. Oh, sorry. So that that's was it. Uh, I don't know if there are some questions. And uh, yes, I, I can answer. Uh, I will try to answer uh, to this question if there. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much, Dr. Liberali. And as Dr. Liberali mentioned, we are now going to begin answering the questions that have been submitted so far during the presentation. But as a reminder, you can still send your questions through the questions pane in your attendee control panel. So our first question for you today. Um, is it possible to use ICG after an in, vi in vivo SLN procedure to control the colon vascularization before anastos anastomosis? That's a very good question. In fact, there is no problem to use both uh, uh, ICG for both techniques. So you can use uh, peritumora peritumorally but you know that the doses used for the peritumoral injection is very uh, low, and so it will not impact on the control of uh, the vascularization of the colon before to perform the uh, uh, colon anastomosis. This is not a problematic at all. You have to inject a sufficient doses, so uh, in general, we inject a, 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 at least um, the, the half doses of the flapul, so it means 12.5 milligram. But uh, after a sentinel leaf node, maybe a little bit increase the doses, I would say at least uh, 15 uh, milligram. But it depends also of the weight of the patient. Thank you. And that leads us very nicely into our next question, which is, what is the typical dose for ICG for these procedures? And does it ever vary? So, um, so the, the doses used for intravenous mapping or for peritumoral uh, are different. So for the peritumoral injection, most of people of teams use 0.5 milligram per cc, and uh, but the volume injected varies as, as I, I showed you in uh, uh, the table in the literature review table. Uh, but uh, we use 2 cc volume. Uh, uh, concerning the uh, in vivo mapping, so we perform the injection at the beginning of the operation. We do the image about uh, half hour. Uh, um, one hour and a half uh, after uh, injection, and the doses injected is 0 0.25 milligram per kilo. 
Thank you very much. And we've God, the questions are coming in so fast now for you. Um, the next one is, what is the timing of the ICG prior to the procedure? Do you do this in the OR or in pre-op? No, no, we do, we do it uh, uh, in, uh, in, the, in the OR. So it's very, e practically, it's very easy, really. Because in fact, um, uh, for the detection of uh, hepatic tumor and so on, you have to inject it at least 24 hours before operation. So it's a little bit complicated. It's easy in patients with HCC because they need to have uh, uh, a test with ICG. That's not problematic. But in colon cancer, it's not the case. So you, you, if you have to 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 inject the patient before the procedure, it's it's not easy to use. Here, we inject the patient intravenously uh, uh, at the beginning of the press procedure once uh, the, the, the patient is sleeping. So Thank very you. easy necessity to hospitalize the patient before or to inject the patient uh, intravenously uh, uh, before uh, the, the operation. Thank you. And we have a question that's sort of following on from that is, what is your experience with the submucosal colonoscopy injection of ICG the day previous to the surgery? No one. I don't have any uh, experience uh, using uh, uh, this type of uh, uh, technique. Uh, I, I, I like really uh, very much uh, the submucosal injection, but uh, as I told you, it's true that again, in practice, it's not always easy to use because you need to have the gastroenterologist. Uh, actually, in Belgium, we be surgeon begin to perform their self. Uh, endoscopy, but it's, it's not always so easy to, to do. <laughs> and so uh, here in Bordeaux, we are really dependent of the gastroenterology. So it's easy for patients with uh, rectal cancer or left colon because it's then they they do it very fastly. But uh, for patients with other location, uh, it's much more difficult. But I don't have any experience uh, with an ejection uh, performed uh the day before the operation so i don't know but i can, can imagine that um if we still have a, a visualization of uh, icg in the tumor then uh, uh probably that the uh, lymph node remaining hyperfluorescent uh could be it could be also uh, uh, interesting to uh, to, to do that, but I don't have any experience, so I cannot answer with uh, uh, that question. Thank you very much. And our next question is, do you recommend to perform SLNB with ICG in early colorectal cancers? Yes, for sure. Uh, alors, my, my, my most, my preferable in indication are uh, for, for two regions, uh, air patient with uh, also with uh, small small tumor, but also certainly patient uh, having um, uh, angular uh, colon cancer, hepatic or a splenic flexure uh, tumor, because uh, here we you will also use it for uh, to 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 see the lymphatic drainage and to really guide you your surgery. Um, so, but uh, for sure, in patients with uh, small tumor, uh, there is uh, an indication. I don't know why, in general, uh, we we do not well, teams don't, did not perform the technique because it's not so difficult. And in this patient, clearly, it works very well, very very well. Thank you very much. And our next question starts with a comment saying, brilliant presentation, thank you very much. Um, how do you think we can use the concordance between the blue LNs and fluorescence um, lymph nodes in our surgical practice? Uh, what do you mean? I don't understand really the question. The, 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 the... We can, so, we can come. You... We can... Um, it's to, um, we'll come, we can come back to that question. I can uh, forward that on to you and maybe we could respond after the webinar. Um, okay. 
Okay, so yes, because if we have the 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 objective um, when we compare the, the there is two answers. The first one if, is if we compare the, the the two techniques with the peritumoral injection, and then we see that there is a very good correlation between the two techniques, and that's logical because we use two different molecules, two different type of imaging. One is with a machine, the other one is with the eye, but the, 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 the mechanism is the same. Uh, and therefore, we observe, I think, the same percentage of, not the same, but almost the same uh, uh, between the two techniques. But if we compare the uh, intravenous, the sentinel lymph node, systemic sentinel lymph node, I will say, uh, and the sentinel lymph node detected by peritumeral injection, uh, I cannot yet answer uh, with um, <laughs> solid uh, data, but uh, uh, we did several patients and we observed that, uh, as I show you, in patients with small tumor, these two sentinel lymph nodes are the same. And in patients with large tumor, uh, they are different. And that's a very, very uh, interesting, but we don't have enough data to confirm uh, definitively this uh, hypothesis. Thank you very much. And being conscious of time, we'll just take a couple of more questions before we wrap up for today. All the questions will be forwarded on, so we will get back to you on those. Um, so our next Perfect. question, is it necessary to use both blue dye and ICG to map SLN in colon cancer? Uh, I'm not sure it's necessary um, uh, because uh, as I, I, I told you before, um, there, the mechanism of detection is quite the same. But uh, what it's very interesting to, to use the two, but it needs more a little bit more time. It needs to use uh, both um, uh, dye. And uh, it's very interesting because, in fact, I think that, for example, in patients uh, who are, who are uh, obese, sorry, um, we, we can see better the sentinel lymph node with the fluorescent technique than uh, with the blue dye technique. And so if you will use the two, for sure, you will a little bit increase uh, the, 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 the result of the sensitivity. We observe that in uh, our uh, uh, series. So you can, you can do it, but the problem is the false negative and the false negative uh, will occur with both techniques. So it will not um, uh, solve all the problem. Thank you very much. And moving to our final question we have time for today, and that is, how does it or how does this procedure alter the extent of the lymphadectomy? Uh, that's a very question, a very good question. Um, um, I think that particularly for uh, uh, flexure colon cancer, uh, you you really uh, see can see very well the the, the men in general, not in all patients, but in general you see uh, very well the main lymphatic drainage. Um, particular, uh, personally, sorry, uh, um, I never had a, 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 a case, a easy case, with uh, a clear aberrant uh, lymphatic drainage uh, 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 giving an extended surgery. For example, uh, with the example I show you, if you have a, a, a right colon cancer and you can have a, a drainage uh, into uh, the, the, the left part of the uh, colica media, then you, you can extend the, the, the colectomy to the uh, uh, larger part of the transverse column. But I never really observed that. Um, but in case of splenic flexure or hepatic flexure uh, colon cancer, then uh, really uh, it, it, it gives us really the... the, 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 the do you say that uh, the direction of the, 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 the lymphatic drainage of the tumor? And so there, because you know that normally for splenic colon cancer, 
uh, you have to do a hemi, left hemicolectomy. But if you perform a, a, a real left hemicolectomy, um, it's not so. It's it's a large it's a large uh, resection, and uh, so if we can guide using this technique, uh, I think it's very very helpful. And that's for me the best, uh, probably the best indication uh, in vivo to guide the, the surgery. Um, yes, I don't know if I answer well to the, to the question. <laughs> Thank you so much for your presentation and for answering all of the questions for us, Dr. Liberale. And Thank you for everyone attending today's webinar. Once you leave the webinar, you will receive a survey on the presentation, and we would appreciate it if you could keep your browser window open and complete that and provide your feedback for us. You will also receive a follow-up email within 24 to 48 hours, which will include a link to view a recording of today's webinar. On behalf of the International Society of Fluorescent Guided Surgery, Diagnostic Green, and our presenter, thank you so much for joining us and please all do enjoy the rest of your day. Goodbye. Thank you. Thank you very much.